Good morning and welcome to the Drive to School podcast. I am Pastor Goodman. I am the content executive here at Higher Things and joining me today is the Reverend Dr. Matt Richard serving out in Minot, North Dakota. How are you doing today? Good. Good to see you, Harrison. It's good to see you too. You made it through Easter. Yeah. Yeah. We had a, a huge snowstorm up here in North Dakota. I don't know if uh, it made the national news, but last I heard it was it was over 40 inches that we had. Uh, so I heard that's, I, that's I could, absurd. So it was, I know it was 36, about 36 to 37, but then we got hit again on Easter Sunday. So it was over 40 inches of snow. And uh, so I had, I had parishioners that were literally snowed in from, from, let me get this straight. It was like Wednesday. It was from Wednesday till Monday. And uh, it was like, you know, you go into the stores and it was like a, almost like a zombie apocalypse. I mean, all the milk was gone and all the eggs were gone and all the bread was gone. And people were running, I mean, before the storm, they're going around in the grocery carts, just accumulating as much stuff as they could because the storm was going to hit. And uh, it, it was nice being home with the family though, uh, you know, tucked into our houses and uh, I'm tired of snow. <laughs> I'm so tired of snow. So yeah, much snow. I mean, Easter morning, even Jesus got an angel to like move the giant boulder and you guys right, were right. in the snow. Right. So. Right. No, it was, so it's, it's good. It's the moisture is good for our farmers. We have a lot of farmers and ranchers around here, so they needed the moisture. So we're, we're really happy for that. And so it was a little bit of inconvenience for the rest of us, for the sake of them having good crops and, and good, good uh, pay for their, their, their cattle. That's, that's so be it. That's great. Just being a good neighbor is all. Yeah. <laughs> Shoveling snow and complaining, right? <laughs> right. All right. Well, since it's, it's sort of right on our minds today, um, what does Jesus say about the cross for you? Um, this is this is what we just sort of made it through the whole weekend for, because it's not just Easter after all. It's it's the whole triduum. It's it's Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, and the vigil moving into the, the resurrection of our Lord. But what does all of this mean for you? Yeah, for us, for you, for me, for those that are listening, uh, for the young, for the old, for everyone. It's simple. It's it's it is finished and. And it's it's a fun little Greek word that's that's fun to say. It's it's tetelestai. It's just a fun little Greek word. It's it's it is finished. And and if you think about the word is finished, gosh, uh, what's finished? God's wrath against us and our sin is finished. What what's finished? The condemnation of sin against us is finished. Uh, what's finished? The devil. The devil's finished. You know, uh, everything else has been crucified unto us. And and so when Jesus finishes it, he, he accomplishes it all for us. And so, you know, for us as Christians, we, we live off of the finished work of Jesus and what he did. And uh, as we were talking just briefly beforehand, uh, you think about this in, in our lives, we're always living for tomorrow's accomplishments in, in this world. And so if you're, you know, if you're a student, you know, you, the grades you got in first grade, they don't matter. You know, you, you got to get the grade here coming up. Um, sporting events, you know, if, if you're maybe a junior in high school and you were the champions, it doesn't mean anything for your senior year. You have to what? You have to move forward to a new accomplishment. And that's the same thing with, with work. You know, we show up to work to make sales. We, we, we do um, other things. We're always moving forward to that, which is in the future. So I've heard it said before that, that the accomplishments of the past, uh, how do they go? Something about the fact that accomplished in the past, uh, uh, we can't live with them. Otherwise, we void the future potential in front of us. Uh, however, when it comes to Christianity, for us as Christians, we do live off of the accomplishments of the past, not ours, but Christ. Uh, they count for something. They matter. Um, they, they, they continue forever. So those words of Jesus saying, it is finished, it is finished they echo through eternity. And, and that, that declaration of what he did on the cross uh, matters 2,000 years ago. It matters you know, 1,500 years ago. It matters 500 years ago. It matters right now. Uh, that it's finished and it, and it continues to be finished for, for you and for me. Right. This is a hugely different thing for the rest of the world. One of the tricks that I learned uh, really early on was uh, never look like you're good at something because then people will expect you to do more of it. Uh, this is sort of a burden <laughs> of uh, actually accomplishing things in this world. Uh, I, I remember being, uh, I was in high school and I, uh, I spent hours convincing my mom that I didn't know how to clean a mirror. Um, so she would say clean the mirror and I do a terrible job at it and these streaks all over the place. So eventually she just gave up and realized I wasn't capable of doing this, this thing. So somebody else would have to, if you show that you're good at something, the best thing that you can hope for is to do more of it. And this is sort of the burden of works in this world. Um, and so even when it's, it's a fun thing, uh, all right. So win win a championship and then next year, what's the expectation? Now you better be good. Yeah, I mean, for you to, to come out and, and be anything less than good, it, it's, it's worse than before. Uh, yep. For us, doing just means the burden of, of 
doing more. And it's easy to get buried under it, especially when we have to contrast failure and success because it marks us all as not enough. It marks us all as, as well, burdened by sin. And so to actually have a cross where it is finished doesn't keep on more burden, but actually lets you go back to receive more gift that, that over and over again from this one cross, we get to receive forgiveness over and over and over again. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not to get too technical on the, on, on, on the grammar stuff. And, and I was, I was, I was a, speaking of past and school, I was a lousy, gosh, I was a lousy English, uh, English uh, student. I mean, I vocabulary and all that is just terrible. I just, just pathetic. It was terrible. But my understanding of, of, of the uh, Greek language uh, that word to tell it's, it's, in, it's in the indicative, um, which basically it's kind of this mood of certainty. It's like with a period, right? And so if I say something with certainty, I don't put a question mark. I put a, I put a period, you know, it, it, it is finished period, boom, done period. And so that's the word, how it's used with an indicative. And then it also has this idea um, of, of being a perfect. Now, uh, in the Greek language, basically, if you imagine that something's done, then it has ongoing uh, ripples and effects. You know, I could throw a rock into the water and then there's boom, there's a kerplunk, but then there's, there's the effects of it that go on. And, and so when Jesus says it is finished, it's accomplished, it's done, it's, it's complete. But then the effects of that completeness, what he did they, they go on. And that's, that's how that word is used. So there's a going on. And so, so we depend on what was done indicative period for us, but then that effects of that doneness, they, they, they impact us forever. I mean, they, they impact us into eternity that, that my sins are forgiven in Christ. And that's why we can say as, as pastors, you know, and, and, and we can say as Christians to one another, uh, to look to another stranger and just say, Hey, you know, Jesus forgave you of all your sins. He bled and died for your sins, which is true. And it's indicative and it's also perfect. It's ongoing. It continues. And so it's one sufficient sacrifice for, for all time, not, not having to repeat that sacrifice over and over and over and over. It's done. So what that means for us is, is it's just, it's, it's phenomenal that we can go through life with this assurance that, that no matter how good or bad it gets, that's finished for me. Um, that I can have a good day and God be praised. It's still finished for me. I can have a bad day and guess what? Jesus still finished it for me. Um, I can be on my deathbed and guess what? Jesus finished it for me. Um, I can be at the heights of maybe a promotion at work or I, you know, maybe get on the honor roll at school and guess what? It's finished for me. And so the assurance is not dependent upon my future accomplishments. It's on the accomplishments of Jesus, which then leads to freedom, you know, leads to joy, which just leads to, uh, just serving one's neighbor and, and resting that whether it's up, down, left or right, it's finished. Right. And it, it sort of redefines Christianity away from if you don't know a lot about Christianity or if, or if you know somebody who, who doesn't, one of the, the little bits that most people tend to know is that Christianity is sort of a ladder religion where you just have to keep doing more and getting better. And this just flies in the face of that that just all too common myth that, of course, we try and serve our neighbor. Of course, we, we hang on to the law, but it's it's finished. The law has already been fulfilled. That doesn't mean don't try. That doesn't mean don't take care of your neighbor or abandon the things that God would call good. But it means that your failure can't undo Christ's victory. And yep. that's that's a great joy. Yep. Yep. Uh, an old professor, uh, they'd always say to us, gentlemen, um, you know, we don't rightly love our neighbors until we're loved ourselves. And so it's being loved ourselves. Um, and also understanding that God doesn't need our good works, our neighbor does. And so, uh, I mean, and this, this into everything. I mean, think of the apostle Paul. I love it. I just love it in, in the epistles where he kind of has this little, uh, this little match of, of credentials. He's like, okay, so, you know, you want to see who's, who, who's the biggest uh, Christian. All right. So it'd be like, it'd be like, you know, Paul coming out and saying, okay, uh, Bible trivia points. I've got the most, um, check. Got it. Uh, credentials. You know, I went to the most VBSs and I went to the most, most youth trips, the most mission trips. Uh, check, 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 check. I went to all the colleges. I went to all the seminaries. I've taken all the classes. Uh, you know, I got, I got uh, how many, I got tons of these crosses around my neck and he has all these things and, and he lays this, all the credentials and he, and he builds this whole case about how he's better than everybody else. And then he says, what? He says, this is scubala, right? It's dung compared to what? Christ the surpassing worth of, of, of richness of Christ. And so uh, it's beautiful. I mean, it's freedom that, that it is finished. It's in Jesus. It's not in me. It's not in Harrison. Um, it's not in what we do. It's in Christ. And 
So that means I get to serve my neighbor. I get to, to, to bless others um, because Christ loves me. Christ did it all for me and it's finished. It kind of levels the vocational playing field a little bit too. If you happen to be a student and get bossed around by teachers all the time and you have trouble with that, if you happen to be a, a, a student and you don't get to wear one of these fancy black shirts with a white thing and so you just can't be as spiritual or as religious, it, it's, it's again a recognition that no, actually, if, if Jesus is for you, you are whole, you are complete. There is no adding to it. And so the, the student is every bit as holy as the teacher. The, the, the layman is every bit as holy as the pastor. There, there is no more sort of like staggered uh, value in the eyes of the Lord, but it is finished, actually radiates outward, even for this. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it comes back to the Ephesians text too, right? God, God prepared in advance uh, works for us to walk in. And so he laid them out for us and we get to just simply walk in them. And, and it's, it's, uh, it's glorious. And so I don't do the good works to become a Christian. I do good works because I already am, you know, and that's the whole difference. And so if, if it isn't finished, then we have to do good works to become a Christian or stay a Christian. But uh, because it is finished, uh, we don't do them to become, we do them because we are, we are redeemed. We are forgiven. Christ's blood, blood and died for us is sufficient for us. And so we can't add to it. And so because we can't add to it, we're free. We're free and to serve we our neighbor. When we fail, we can't take away from it either. This is actually one of the most reassuring things that, that since Christ is risen, he who is crucified is risen from the dead. Well, we get to ask of, of all our failures, of all our sins, of all the things that we lose the most sleep over, our deepest shames and our, our biggest, uh, our, our most oppressive guilts. Can it go back 2,000 years in the past and put Jesus back in the tomb? Yeah. Because if you can't sin in such a way that puts Jesus back in the tomb, it's finished, means that that sin is forgiven. Yep. 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 Our actions of today cannot be absolutely sit spot on that, that our actions today cannot go and keep them from going to the cross or keep them in the tomb. You know, it, it's, again, it's in the indicative, right? I mean, it, 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 he bled, he died and he rose. Uh, it's objective. And that's what I love. It's, it's fixed in objective time and place. Uh, this Christian faith, it's not a ethereal uh, idea or some sort of concept that we've all like, you know, put our heads together and we agree upon it. So like, Hey, this sounds good. Let's let's okay. That's great. Harrison. Yep. We got it. Let's teach it now. No, it, it's objectively something that happened, bled, died, and rose for us. And it, it, it's, it's for us. It's a gift. And again, uh, we have those words where Christ says, as he gave up his spirit, it is finished. And uh, they echo through eternity and they're for us. That's fantastic. Well, let's roll out the podcast that way too. It's finished. Thanks. It's finished. Yep. It's done. Complete. All right. Hey, thanks for uh, sticking around for us. We'll see you next time. Sounds good, Harrison. See ya.